Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome back to Halfway. So, what the hell is going on here? This is not what I would call a normal invasion. First the monolith in Amber's server room, and now one up here? We need to get out of here quickly. At least we have the key card for the bridge now. Okay. I guess I realized I technically did say that in the previous episode, but you know what, whatever. It's time to talk to everyone. Lannis, the chip in my head. Yeah. Any new developments? Well, some insight, maybe. These monoliths. Have you noticed that they dispatch a strong signal of some sort? No, we hadn't. But now that you mention it, all of us get a headache when we're exposed to them. Yeah, I get them too, but my chip recognized a pattern. I think it's some sort of data signal, but I have no idea what its purpose could be. The signal is encoded somehow, and not even my chip can touch it. Did you talk to Josh and Schaefer about this? Yeah, I did, but Schaefer's equipment is inferior to my interface. The results were useless. And Josh? What did he have to say? Nothing useful. He mentioned that there might be some sort of antenna or energy shields. Besides, Josh has his hands full trying to fix up Alice. But one thing we can all agree on, the monoliths have a specific purpose. Alright, I need to get going. Keep me in the loop should you figure anything out. So... My hope is that as part of all of this, we get to blow a couple of those up and screw everything up for the mutant Borg people. Anyway, hey Wallace, you seem happy. What happened? Can you keep a secret? Of course. What is it? Even from Schaefer? <laughs> you should know by now that I think what I think of Schaefer. All right, listen. Gina secretly hacked into Schaefer's neuro implant and got access to some. Gina did what? Shh, Landis, keep it down, damn it. Gina accessed Schaefer's private logs and figured out what he really did to Frank. That's possible? She can get access to private data? Yeah, I guess she didn't tell you. Anyway, she was able to figure out that Frank's memories haven't been erased permanently. Schaefer tried, but he failed because he lacked the right equipment. And all this means... if it, it isn't permanent. Schaefer restricted Frank's access to his memory and free will, even his emotions are deactivated. But Gina thinks that she can reactivate it as soon as we're ready. That's great news. So why haven't you done it yet? Well, of course I wanted to, but Gina thinks that doing so would almost certainly put Frank in a coma. That's the last thing we would need right now. That makes sense. What about the rest of the modifications? Schaefer will have to pay for those. I promise. So they're permanent. Yeah. Poor guy. Like, <laughs> kidnapped by a dick of a scientist and modified personality turned off. I mean, essentially, some level of murder there. Sorta. I guess personality death at the very least. Anyway, time to talk to Sam. Lennis, things are starting to get creepy here. What do you mean? Don't those black rifts and monoliths scare you? I get goosebumps just thinking about them. I mean, this is all just crazy. Damn. Sorry, Linus, I didn't mean to lose it. It's just that I'm worried about what's going to happen. I understand, Sam. I don't know what to think about all this either. But as long as we can kill those things, we at least have a chance. Don't say that too loud. I don't want to deal with invisible intruders. Let's just get on with it before we drown ourselves in worry. Hey, Linus. Look at this. All I can see is a pile of black dust. This is what's left of those odd flying saucers that attacked us, Lannis. The interesting thing is, they consist of the same material as the monoliths and the crystals we found. Are you sure? Well, I don't have sufficient equipment to be absolutely certain, but the results are pretty telling. It's all the same spooky material. I think we're dealing with the first type of intruder that isn't a mutated human. So, this is what our enemy truly looks like? <laughs> our, this is what our enemy truly look like. Whoops. That would be absurd. No, I don't think we have the leftovers of an alien here, but more something like a drone. Alien tech, if you'd like. And what would their purpose be? They don't seem very powerful. A great question. The pile of ash doesn't tell us, unfortunately. I doubt we'll ever find out. Well, my main concern is that we can kill these things. The rest can wait. Ha. I'll let you know if I find anything else. Okay, so apart from that, it's Josh Schaefer and, uh, well, 13, who's pretty much just a lump of meat at this point. I can talk to him, though. 
not exactly sure what he's doing. Sir? You have permission to talk freely? Negative, sir. Well, that was short. Hey, Josh. Is Alice almost ready? Getting there. She still doesn't do exactly what I want her to do, but we should be ready soon. I really hope so. We can only get one chance to get out of this mess here. Dude, I know. But it's not as simple as it might sound to get an AI running on this improvised mainframe. The memory is too limited for virtualizing the entire AI, and if I optimize the entire... Uh, optimize the wrong subroutine... Okay, okay, I get it. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah. Can I get back to it now, please? And lastly, Schaefer. It's a shame we couldn't retrieve any marvelous samples. I'm sure it would have helped us to understand what we're dealing with. Either way, I ran some tests on these rifts. It's a very odd phenomenon that doesn't make any sense. We should definitely avoid them. They could be dangerous. But why am I telling you all this anyway? Don't you have something better to do? Yep. Classic Schaefer. Man, I do not like him. Anyway, so, I guess you're not really supposed to like him. So, I'm gonna futz with any, uh, everybody's inventories, and I will see you guys in a bit. We're going to the real mission. Okay, mission briefing time. So, let's see who we're forced to bring with us today. Is it going to be Schaefer? Is it going to be Josh? Who knows? Man, we're getting close. Really, come to think of it, I can see some extra pathways. Oh, wait, no, that's just how the ship, ship is laid out. Never mind. I thought I could see, like, pathways to other missions that we haven't found yet. Oh. Well, this kind of sucks. I... Nope. Apparently these guys are all required, so that means I have to switch around everybody's inventories. Great. So, seeing as, um... We're in this situation... Scat Suit Mark IV. Not actually that great. So, we've got Gina Nia, who... Let's see. Could put her in... We don't want to have any more Assault Suit Mark Threes. We put her in a tank suit or a Mark V assault suit, which is actually pretty tempting. The aiming boost would be really useful. So we'll do with that with her and her gun. She needs a better gun. Linda, what gun do you have? She has a laser rifle. That seems adequate for me. Let's just equip her the shotgun. Give Gina the laser rifle. As, as much as I like the whole shotgun business... The limited range really does kind of mess with my ability to do anything. And Josh. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, what do you do with Josh? The guy that just, hmm, can't, can't do whatever. Well, I could give him a sniper rifle, but for some reason he, he can't aim. Actually, this laser rifle will, I guess, do the trick. I don't know, it's not very good, but I don't have any other good ones around. Unless I wanted to dress him up like, uh, 13 and have him do melee stuff, but I get the feeling he'll get shot down super fast. He needs a new armor for sure. Could just put him in the better tank suit, but that seems a little silly to me. Okay, where's the rest of my armor? So we got a couple of tank suit Mark 6s and a scout suit Mark 4. We'll just do this. Probably call that good enough, I think. Because, oh, he needs ammo. Everybody needs ammo. Luckily, we shouldn't run into a whole lot of huge ammo issues, but we're also going to have a team that's pretty much mid-range only, no long-range people here. Schaefer maybe can snipe. He was getting a little bit better, and, I mean, Morton has pretty great accuracy, but we'll see. The bridge, finally. Good thing the keycard worked. Do we know what to expect here? I had to fix a terminal here once before. The bridge is almost more of a lookout point than is a typical bridge. How is that? Well, in most cases, the journeys are completely automated. There's not much for officers to do. Okay, but we should be able to attach Alice here, right? Yes, the GSA didn't fully trust Amber. That's why there's a manual override method, which can be activated from here. Great. Let's go then. You and Josh get to work right away. The rest of us will cover you. I'm a little d disappointed we couldn't bring the full team with us on this mission. Unless I wasn't paying attention and could have actually brought, you know, more than four people. Uh. What the? Dude. Weird. We definitely haven't seen one of those... Or one of these before. What now? He, he's cutting off the way to the terminal access. 
Looks like he's protected by some sort of shield. Schaefer, what do your scanners report? Can we destroy the shield? Not a chance. The numbers are far beyond anything I've ever seen. Anyone else have any ideas? Hey, Lannis. Those two monoliths on the side. What about them? Remember how I told you I can feel a signal going out from them? Those two are so strong I can almost see them. They're all... They all lead directly into the central platform. The one with the guy on top? Yep. I think if we can destroy the monoliths, the signal will fail. Can they even be destroyed? Yeah, it seems like high energy levels are somehow weakening their structural integrity. You can see all of that? Yes, I can already see signs of breakdown. Alright, you heard Nia. Let's focus fire on these monoliths. Lannis, jump incoming. Ah, great. Knew it was gonna be too easy. Normally. So, who are we fighting here? Looks like we've got a couple of UFOs. How many do we got? Oh, that's that's more than a couple. And a couple of options available to us right now. Let's take the really cheesy method. Back everybody off. So, I think what I'm going to have is Josh and... Uh, I mean, Schaefer shouldn't exactly be sniping. Realistically, well, no, Schaefer should be sniping. He's got great accuracy. The problem is, like, I, I have a halfway temptation to actually have him be a frontliner, purely because his shields are crazy. Like, he's actually probably one of the toughest characters we have. Of course, shields don't have reduced, you know, damage, but, oh well. Any of these work? I forgot what her ability does. I haven't used Nia in a while. And I feel kind of bad about that, but, eh, whatever. That's it for everybody's actions, so... Hopefully the UFOs will get within a decent amount of distance. And... Hmm... I think on my next turn I'm gonna have everybody fall back one more distance. Because... This way, then they'll truly be confined to the small area. And... That's a lot of UFOs. Okay, so... Uh, run. Especially because people are running low on shields. Move Schaefer back here. Should be all good. And he can even snipe somebody. I mean, accuracy is a little bit on the low side, but I, I was hoping. Didn't work, but I was hoping. What else? Oh, right, she can paralyze an enemy. That'd be potentially useful, but not today. I probably should have moved her to the other side. Kept everything symmetrical. Oh, well, not a big deal. And he can't see anybody. So, retaliate, might as well. And nobody has any more action. So, now the UFOs are getting their shields back, which is actually really bad. It means I'm going to have to focus fire a heck of a lot more than I have been. But we're going to have them all in one very small area, and it looks like our number one target has revealed itself. So, grenades are an option. Grenades do a fair amount of damage. The one problem... Is, oh, hello. Wow. They... Hmm. Oh, this is gonna be a party. And he's already out of ammo. Damn. Well, whatever. With luck, we'll be able to just chew through these guys. No problem. Now, this does kind of present the conclusion that cover is pointless. So I'm just going to prioritize killing everything. Suddenly the whole me poo pooing shotguns seems a little ill-advised. Oh well, a little bit too late for that. So, next round, uh, assuming Josh isn't dead... Right, these guys all get double shots, which kind of sucks. Assuming Josh isn't dead... no, nope, there he goes. We might actually have to redo this mission with a little bit more ta tactical foreknowledge. As in, move everybody back already, and equip them with shotguns or something. I don't know, though. Either way, I think we're gonna be able to make it out of here all right. It's just some amount of, you know, concern. We're over here, Schaefer. Come on, Schaefer. Hit it. If you can hit it twice, we'll be all good. Not enough, though, and of course, Josh is down, so we can't use his anti-shield ability, and I think Schaefer's shields are gone. We, we, we are in a bit, bit of a pickle as far as Everybody taking damage goes, yep, oh, well, we've already lost Morton. 
Yeah, we might actually have to mulligan this one. Oh, at least Schaefer's got his ammo back. Anyway, this is the... Or, not ammo. His shield's back. It's pretty important. So, we've got... A bunch of these guys. Yeah, the odds are quickly becoming very uneven in a very not fun way. And that's okay. You l you learn your from your mistakes, right? Plus, uh, if we restart from level, we don't have to worry about any of our armor missing. So, uh, I mean, not to be wasteful, but, you know, less to worry about, right? And he's about to go down. Probably. I'm gonna have to check though, to see if I can actually bring the whole team along, because that'd actually be really useful. In, you know, so many ways, come to think of it. Because you'd think this might actually even be the last round. Well, I have no idea. Come on, Schaefer. You can snipe harder than that. Get him a crit. Nope. Wow, this... Oh, and he's got his shields back. I give up. <laughs> There's no winning this one right now. But, uh... I'll learn my lesson. And by learn my lesson, I mean leave everybody back here in some kind of, like, kill hole. So, reload from home base. Oh. Now I have to go talk to everybody. Oh, well, this sucks. Hold on. Oh, this is gonna double suck if I have to do this multiple times. Maybe I can just ignore it. Actually, I have no idea what happens if I ignore it. Let's see what fu what happens. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to futz with everybody's inventories, which is always a little bit on the dull side. Oh, yep, we can bring the whole team along. That explains why I was extremely underpowered. So in that case, oh, that's that's going to change so many things. I'm actually really glad that we re had to reload. Okay, so first and foremost, make sure everybody has enough ammunition. So it looks like we've got... She's got a shotgun now. Actually not a bad setup. The snipers still have their sniper suits. In fact, I don't think I really changed anything around that needs to be changed back. So I, I guess it saved some settings. 13 really doesn't need ammunition. And everybody else has at least three sets, right? So in that case, I'm going to give Jenna one more set. And I'm half tempted to give... 13, oh yeah, 13 does have the tank prototype. I'm not keen on it, but it seems like a smart idea, and I'll get rid of his shield kit in favor of a... It, it is tempting to put him in a tank suit. You know what, we'll, we'll go with the Mark VI tank suit. It's probably a better idea than the tank prototype. That'll boost his mobility, his aiming, and you'll give him some amount of shields, which is probably going to let him last longer, even though teleportation is useful. But, uh... 13 is going to be our frontliner. She's got shotgun. Let's quickly check to see if there's a better shotgun sitting in the wings. Not a sniper rifle. There's the big fusion gun. I almost hilariously want to put it on Josh or something like that. Or, eh, but that seems unnecessary. So every, everybody's loaded up. Uh, do we have any grenades left? That's the last thing to check. Nope, doesn't look like it. Well. <laughs> and we do have those temporary stim packs that we shouldn't have. I guess the last thing we should do is probably just load people out with med kits. Because I'm predicting we're going to have some people take some pretty heavy damage here. I'm going to load up the medium and larges. And really just have Sam carrying it all, carry it all around. Uh, Schaefer. Do we have any other large shield kits? Probably should. Yeah, there's one. There's another one. Jenna has a med kit. She has a small one. That seems unnecessary. Go with the large. And this has got to be it for everybody. Schaefer doesn't need more. Uh, Schaefer could use a medium one, actually. Assuming it still have one. Or did I just give... Eh, whatever. You can have two. And at, at this point, I don't think I can load these guys out any more than I have. I'll have him reload, just because one ammo remaining is not what I would call adequate. Uh, and everybody else is practically full, so let's go buy a little bit more ammo. Load it up onto Sam, and then roll out. Yeah, this has got to be the last mission. Can't imagine that it would be... 
anything else. And we might as well have 13 use the health stim pack. Because, ugh. Okay, so. Shield cell, large. We could use that. I guess I could put it on her. On Linda. Because she can't get that back normally. Either that or... Yeah, yeah Linda, you can, you can have a large shield kit. Okay, at this point I'm thinking too hard. Let's go! Let's see what happens. The bridge, finally. Good thing the keycard worked. Do we know what to expect here? I had to fix the terminal once, here once before. The bridge is almost more of a lookout point than it is a typical bridge. Why is that? Oh wait, we've already seen this. Why am I even reading this out loud? Okay, skip past the dialogue, and hopefully we can actually put people into posi position. Unfortunately, positions are a little bit on the clunky side. As well... I'll move the snipers back here. They can get some level of crossfire. Uh, let's see. Watch, as soon as I go through these doors, things stop mattering anymore. We'll see. We'll continue to see. Ah, my formation. It's gone. Oh, well. I guess I can always fight the UFOs out and about. Because now, it's an even fight. So, quickly skip past all of this. Hey, if you press escape, I believe. And skip past the dialogue. Good to know. Anyway. We got quite the fight on our hands. We don't have cover, which is inherently concerning. Now here's the question. Is it better to prioritize just shooting all of these things at once and taking them out, or getting behind cover? I think we all know the answer to that one. Let's just hope that there aren't, you know, tougher enemies hanging out here to make me regret my decisions right now. Come on, hit. I'm, I'm hoping with... I'm hoping with a even hit ratio, like a slightly higher than 50% hit ratio, we can get some good hits in, but you never know. Okay, she's got a shotgun. That's a good distance to hit from. Unfortunately, it kind of disappoints me that the shotgun's actually pretty pitiful at doing damage. Like, I've seen better damage on many, many other we types of weapons. It's kind of pathetic. Josh, you have the worst. Josh, you are the worst. There's no redeeming you. Okay, next up, this guy. I probably should have had Josh use his anti-whatever ability. Oh well. And can't get close enough for a chainsaw gun. 13 has the worst accuracy, actually, out of everybody. Oh well, and that's it for everybody's actions. So, we've taken out one UFO, which is actually kind of pitiful. I was hoping we'd be able to take out more than this, but uh, we'll see. And 13 is already getting shot. With luck? Okay, I'll, I'll probably toss people somewhat behind cover. And we're gonna have, I think we're just gonna have 13 moving and punch something. Everybody's just shooting at him like meanie butts. Now, yeah, I, I could have her do Berserk, but that's kind of unnecessary. She does have uh, a good guy to hit. I guess this one's not behind cover, so this is gonna be target number two. Probably. Uh, Schaefer, or not Schaefer. Yeah, so I'll focus fire that one, see if I can take it out, because these guys have an inordinately fast recharge time on their shields, and it's better that I take them out ASAP before, you know, terror, terror bad things happen. So, Josh, your chances of hitting this guy, 73%, come on, take him out. Yeah, awesome. Okay, next up, he's already getting biffed. So in that case, we're going to have him teleport here, here, give him some amount of cover. Hopefully they will leave him alone and he can do a crazy amount of damage in melee and hopefully fall it around punching it. It just got all of its shields back. That, wow, they really get that back quickly. That is concerning. Okay, well... At this point, 13 can reliably use a large health pack and corner it. Can't do anything else, but, uh, you know, it'll have to do. Where's our next target? One of these guys does not have cover. The answer is all of them have cover. 
falls. Uh, well, let's try for that one. I said try. There's some debate on my success rate here, which is actually inherently concerning. At least she managed to crit it for 50 damage, which does kind of make a dent in its shields. Fortunately, people have to reload. And so the other thing we could do is have Josh eliminate one of the, these guys' shields, which is actually pretty necessary, but at the same time. Okay, nope, we don't want tap. We want to right click, right click, right click, right click. Okay, so guess not. Josh, can you hit this guy? Oh, come on, Josh. Work your magic again. Thank you. So next turn, I think we will have him kill something shields and go from there. So here's the question. Where to next? Well, let's corner this guy and Linda can just punch it. Ah, that, that's pretty pretty punchy. So we've got three more UFOs left. Hopefully 13 can kind of sort of handle this one. And Linda can handle that one. Too. Oh, damn. That was more damage than I was expecting. Okay, so. I guess. Time to move people out of cover. Not keen on this kind of business, but uh, it'll have to do. Okay, so first. Josh. Move here. Use your shield overcharge on this guy. Probably should have used that earlier. But now that doesn't have shields anymore, and... A plain old steady shot to this guy should take it out. Yep. Perfect. And we only have like two more enemies left. Headshot. Come on. Come on. 70% chance to hit. Totally should hit, right? And I should probably have people actually back up 13 back here because I don't know. He's a tank, but he's not that beefy. Okay. He is quite beefy, but you guys know what I mean. And hopefully, after this, it's just one more wave of UFOs and a uh, horrifyingly overpowered, over like powered whatever creature that we can fight. Nobody has any more actions. Linda's out of commission. So all that's left is this one singular UFO. Unfortunately, oh, it's hiding. I don't like it when they hide. I'll just move him here behind this pillar. I'm trying to think. I should probably just spread people out a little bit, because we're not going to be able to see it immediately. And retaliate. I'm trying to think. How to how to get this guy out? Oh, okay. I can pin him as soon as he Man, that is one cowardly thing. Okay, Josh, what is the cooldown on your shield overcharge? Two more turns. That's actually pretty good. I'll get him behind cover, though. Because hopefully that UFO will have to come say hi. That is not nearly as high as I was hoping for. But I guess we're slowly... No. I guess we're slowly getting it to get closer. Or really, we're just going to get shield overcharge. Yeah, there we go. So I believe we have shield overcharge now. Let's... Double check, confirm. Nope, don't want to use that on the monolith pillars. That's pointless. Move him around here. Shield overcharge this UFO. And then easy peasy chicken breezy. Just gotta pop it once. Bam! Stop the invasion. You know, I'm not gonna get that achievement on the first playthrough. That actually floors me a little bit. Either way, let's. Here's the problem. We got these pillars. Luckily, probably don't heal. As soon as we break the pillars, though, I get the feeling we're going to be put in, in the position where we have to fight that thing. And then, well, uh, where are we supposed to hide from that? Oh, well, at least these pillars are damn easy to hit. So I guess let's just have everybody pepper it from their various locations. I'd prefer to have everybody kind of in the back, except for 13, I'll move him forward. Chances are I'm going to lose him fairly quickly to whatever horrifying monstrosity we end up releasing here. Let's take a look at him. Huh. He's got, like, tentacles off his back and a hood. Weird. That's uh, not even worth it. Gina Nia. Awful accuracy. 
You know what? I'll move her up here too, because she. I will admit I didn't really stim her a whole lot. And I, I'm also crossing my fingers that we don't get a bunch of UFOs showing up. We probably will though. Let's see. Take this one out. Do more UFOs show up? Does not look like it. Okay, that makes my life a lot easier, sort of. Okay. Um, can move Schaefer over here? Might as well have the snipers in the back. Chances of hitting from this distance, 50%. I'm going to conserve the ammo. Might as well use the people that actually have, you know, some level of accuracy. Not visible. Josh, can you shoot? Nope, Josh can't shoot. Can she see it? She can see it. Okay, she'll do the legwork. Uh-oh. She's out of ammo, too. Why is the shield still there? We destroyed both monoliths. Gina? Don't worry. Look, the shield is already weakening. Watch that just be like amber. Turned into some horrifying... space wizard. 